All right, so it looks like the court just went into a sidebar right there. This is perfect time for me to introduce my guests and Bremner trial attorney with us today. And hello. Hi, how are you? Nice to be here. And also along with Anne, we have Roger P. Foley, criminal defense attorney. Let's talk about this trial in general. Um, the prosecution so far has, has sort of been building this case of circumstantial evidence. And I'm guessing at the end, they're gonna bring this all together and tie it all together. Um, Anne, what are your thoughts so far? Well, I mean, it's, it's, I have to say that these, the, all these trials in Florida, they get so confusing with these multiple players and multiple parts and everything else. But they basically are just trying to put it together piece by piece. You know, coincidence after coincidence, which are not coincidences, and all how this all came together and the doctor being murdered. And uh, so far, we know that they've been showing us some evidence, you know, the rental car. We have this discussion of there possibly being blood on some of the items here. Also, we know we're probably going to see um, some DNA tests and that type of evidence coming here. Um, what do you think so far with Rogers here? I mean, is he he's not looking like he's got a good uh, excuse for any of this or where he's been even. That's kind of pointing him to this house because of what we've seen with the GPS and the trek that he made on this car. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and, and also, was that for Roger or for me? But I, I know absolutely. And he's, I mean, there's really no excuse for why he was there. And then I was kind of curious about this last interchange when they said he didn't want to be recorded. Um, but he did give a statement. You know, those kinds of things are determined before trial in what's called a 3-5 hearing, where you look at the admissibility of statements. So I'm really curious as to why they're at sidebar, if there's some kind of an issue with some kind of misspeaking by the prosecutor about something that shouldn't have come in. I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems odd to me that they would go to sidebar on that. Right. Well, I think they actually also just took a lunch break. So whatever oh, that okay. was about, uh, we know they just lunched uh, right now as well. Um, okay. But as I said earlier, we know there are three players involved here. We have Rogers, we have Mark Seavers, and then we also have Curtis Wright Jr. And um, we're expecting that Wright is going to testify against Rogers. This is because he already pled guilty um, and I guess we're going to see him probably on the stand. Um, Roger, how does that play in here? Because this is someone who's also involved, who was allegedly hired as well, and uh, he's going to get up on the stand. What do you think that'll reveal? Well, it's going to reveal the relationship between the three parties, how Seavers hired, uh, I apologize, is the, the gentleman on the stand, and then Rogers was brought in as the third person. You know, they were childhood friends, and then the next person. So they're going to show that relationship. And ultimately, once you bring in a co-conspirator, a co someone who acted in the crime, and he testifies that you were involved and there was a conspiracy to commit a murder, it makes it pretty difficult for the defense to, to come up with a defense. Now, he can say, well, the defense is going to say, well, he was solely involved. But then where does the connection come from? Rogers doesn't know this family, right? Rogers, Ro Rogers only knows because of who he was introduced to. So I, I think it's going to put all the parts in place and everyone's going to understand how this was set up. And ultimately, it's going to be a very difficult, for, very difficult for the defense to, to prove that it wasn't that way. Exactly. It's another one of these cases where we have so many characters. They all are linked together, but that web and the links between them all is going to be very important here. All right, so those were the defense's closing arguments there. A little bit different than um, the mood we felt from the prosecutions. Um, Roger, since you're a criminal defense attorney, what'd you think of his close? I, I think he did an outstanding job. I think it's important to always tell the jurors exactly what you're hoping that they're thinking. I, I think that he, he did a very good job because he was explaining, listen, if there's just one of you, if the rest of you all are voting for death, but there's one person... That's it. Then, then that's it. Then it's a life sentence, and that's what it should be. So stand your gun. Don't let the taller guy, the louder guy, the more vocal woman in the jury. You know, if you're the quiet person, it goes. No, I think life's enough. He did it outstanding. An outstanding job there. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think, uh, as Ann pointed out earlier, the prosecution was more uh, robotic in a way, not as passionate. We didn't see that same sort of energy, um, which is interesting because I want to bring this up. One of the jurors was actually crying in reaction 
to the closing arguments during this phase. Um, so it's interesting because, you know, when you have someone that does such a emotional performance versus someone who is more stoic, uh, it can still evoke that emotion. We don't exactly know, obviously, why the juror was crying, but still it evoked that reaction. Um, and weigh in on that. Yeah, I think it used to be in Florida they didn't have to be unanimous to give death in a jury, and it wasn't that long ago. Roger can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's weighty. Each one of them, like Roger said, has to make that determination. I mean, do any of us sitting here right now on these screens feel that we could make that decision? I mean, do people out there viewing the network right now feel like they could make that decision? In theory, you think you can, but in reality, it's enormous, and no wonder someone was crying. I mean, about the enormity of it, and not knowing what their fellow jurors would say when they got back in the jury room. I mean, obviously, there was at least one juror. Maybe there was half of the jury. Maybe it was the full jury that felt like, like they couldn't impose a death penalty. But the fact that they had to consider it is a very, very weighty decision for anyone. Exactly, and it's so interesting that you said to put yourself in that, the position of that juror and see if you could actually decide. It's tough. It's hard. We don't know. Um, we want to move on and listen to the jury's recommendation. They came to this recommendation after 35 minutes. All right. So Garcia was guilty of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Um, of course, this is all in relation to the death of FSU law professor Dan Markell. Uh, this isn't the last we're going to hear of this case or any of these names, though, because Captain Mag Bonawa, who is actually uh, who's also being tried here, the judge declared a mistrial with her, and there was a hung jury there. So this is interesting because you had the both of them here, but the jurors decided he's guilty for her mistrial. We are unsure of exactly what's going on here. Um, and how does that play in to the fact that they're going to now, I guess, start from scratch and have to find a whole new jury, figure this all out again? Uh, is that going to be tough? Yeah, and I, we always said when I was a prosecutor, it only gets better for the state, you know, because there's surprises in, in any kind of a murder trial or criminal case from the defense. They don't have to give as much as the prosecution who has to give and give and give until it hurts on, on evidence and exculpatory evidence. That having been said, I mean, you've got a hung jury. You've got to look at was it weighed in favor, you know, of conviction or was it even split or was it 11 to 1 to acquit, those kinds of things. And then redo your case in ways to clean that up. She testified. And I think a lot of people thought she didn't testify very well. Well, now you're going to know what she testified to. There's no surprises there if she does it again. And there's going to be have to be a lot of work done there, too. And, and it's not easy to retry a case for the defense, but I think for the prosecution, it's a little bit easier. And she can expect, basically, it's a rerun. It's a redo. But it's probably going to be a tighter case against her. Right. And Roger, do you agree with Anne that the uh, it'll be harder for the defense the second time around? Um, and also, would she testify again in a, in another trial, do you think? You know, I don't, I don't know that until normally what you do on these kinds of cases, if you're going to have a retrial, you, you know, the defense may end up with focus groups. The prosecution already knows their theory of the case. They've already planted out what what they think is going to be. And if the defense is to come up with a different theory, well, then she may have to testify. If she testifies, they're going to use prior, you know, prior statements of this trial, you know, right. against her to, to impeach her. So the, normally on this kind of case, I would think that the defense would be doing a focus group to figure out because they already know what the state's bringing. But I also think that Anne's correct because the state can now narrow their focus. They know exactly what she's going to say on the stand. Because remember, there's no depositions. Uh, of of the alleged defendant, right? There's only depositions of the police and the witnesses involved. So now that they know what she's going to say or what she said, and it, it narrows the focus for the prosecution. It's like they kind of threw a bunch of things against the wall and what's sticking and they can they can focus. And I do think it is easier for the prosecution in this scenario. All right, Roger, thank you. It'll be so interesting to follow and watch this a second time around. And Bremner, thank you as well. We got to take a quick break right now on Law and Crime. Plenty more after this.